I'm so excited for every person watching because there is an actual secret to power in the Bible. And I know that you've probably heard this before, but I'm telling you, there is a revelation here for you today. So today with me, I have special guests. Both are doctors, Dr. Dennis and Dr. Jen Clark. Welcome to Something More. I'm so glad you guys are here today. And I would love to talk to you about the actual power of forgiveness. Well, you know, um, God had taught Dennis all about forgiveness and the power of forgiveness. But when we met, I was really a clueless Christian. <laughs> and I had there had even been somebody that I had been trying to forgive for two years, but I was praying, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. So I am delighted to share some of the things that Dennis taught me. Think back to when you got saved and you asked Jesus to forgive you yes. and you welcomed him into your heart. Did, was forgiveness a long process or did it happen instantly? Instant, quick. <laughs> well, we use a verse as you received Jesus, so walk in him. That's Colossians wow. 2, 6. It's so good. So after we're saved, forgiveness should still be instant because Jesus himself is the forgiver. The secret that I learned that from... That is so good. The secret that I learned from Dennis is you don't ask him to help you. You go to him in your heart and present the issue to Jesus. And wow. then because he who is wow. joined to the Lord is one spirit with him, we're joined with Jesus. And we open our heart and he's the forgiver and we allow him to go to that place in us that's hurting and through it. So it doesn't matter if um, you suffered a serious trauma like an IED exploding on the right. battlefield right. or just your best friend hurt your feelings. It's all easy for Jesus. Wow, and I love that you're saying that because to Jesus, it's all the same. It's all Whatever same. happened can be dealt with. Right, right. And what, what I noticed was that the primary problem with people forgiving is they were trying to help them. I could discern the human spirit and knew that they're still hurting. Right. But they were saying, I forgive. Right, and but they're, they're bleeding like, but inside. I'm really mad. <laughs> and so I'm going, how do I find a tactful way to tell someone who is sincerely sorry, just like this woman that I love, how <laughs> could I tell her tactfully, no, you didn't forgive? Right. So I says, here's what we do. Wow. Scripturally, only God can forgive sin. Right. And scripture says, unless you forgive. Right. So that means both of us. Wow. The only way forgiveness, Matthew 18 says, is from the heart. Wow. And I saw so many people struggle like Jennifer did. Yeah. Sincerely sorry mouthing the proper scriptures. Oh, yeah, we've all the, done that. Yeah, yeah. We've journaled a thousand times, I forgive I this forget, person, right. I forgive them. And you're like, I don't feel like <laughs> I forgave them, but I'm, I'm saying it and I'm going to do the right thing, but the feelings don't yeah. yet match. Right. Do you, why that, do you think that is? That's the key. The key is when you got, as you received him, so walk. When you received him the very first time, what you actually did, whether you knew it or not, you opened your heart, hmm. you received forgiveness, and you made peace with God. But peace wow. that was what we would call in your salvation experience, assurance. Wow. Or I know in my knower. It's tangible. Right. It's, yeah, it's yeah. tangible. Yeah, I know that I know. Like Why like do they I, even say it is... twice? Right. They say right. it because I know here, but I know in my heart. Right. That means there was a supernatural transaction, but that leads us to the more difficult part, and that's the part that I love doing, is because from the time that I got born again, anything that interrupted peace, mm. which for me is a constant, right? and anything, Jesus spoke to me as a baby Christian, Dennis, don't let anything come between what you and I have together. Wow. And so I saw so that, that embrace 
and I had moved in, in, in various of the gifts of the Spirit, but they're flashes of insight based on uh, the situation and they're intermittent. And that's right. when God nailed me. He just said, you want intermittent wow. or you want constant? I think that's so interesting, too, as you're sharing that, Dr. Dennis, that um, people don't realize that actual forgiveness is an in invitation for them of like greater intimacy with God. And so would you mind just praying for everyone that's watching for them to receive this invitation for greater intimacy through forgiveness? Right. Right. We don't want any walls or barriers of any kind. And so I want to pray for each and every person out there who's saying, well, I, I, I've tried like Jennifer did. I tried to forgive, but I can't, and, or it's just too hard. All of that means you're not doing it right. And I don't want to offend anybody, but when it's done from the heart, it's easy. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. So I want you to close your eyes and relax. When you relax, the tendency is to go to your heart, to go to your inner man, the spirit. And you'll feel whatever you need to forgive or whoever you need to forgive, you'll feel an uncomfortableness, whatever that is. Even if you can't define it, it's uncomfortable. It's not the peace of God. I let Jesus the forgiver in me. That's meaning me and Jesus together are doing the forgiving from the heart. And I release forgiveness to whosoever. Now, Here's the beautiful part, and this is the beginning of really discipling yourself into a lifestyle of forgiveness. Who is doing the forgiving? Both of us. But how do I know if I did it right? Peace, just like salvation. There needs to be that assurance so you can test your own spirit. Think of that person you forgave. Close your eyes, relax. Oh, I see, you know, Aunt Eleanor. <laughs> and down here, I feel nothing or peace. That means there was a transaction, a supernatural exchange that took place, and now you're ready to live a forgiveness lifestyle. And you'll have ups and downs, but you will be surprised at how rapidly you get closer to God because just like he said to me, Dennis, you don't want anything to come between what you and I have together. And that means any yuck feeling toward anybody, yourself, others, yeah. Get upset with God. Yeah. So you just release it in Jesus name. Amen. I just believe that people watching all over the world are experiencing the healing power, that dunamis power of forgiveness. And so we're going to go into this a little bit more, what you have access to as a believer. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to something more. I know that people are wondering, you know, how do I live fully alive, full of the Holy Spirit? What's the evidence in my life that I actually am being transformed, being sanctified? And I just want to tell you, there are actual things, there are actual indicators that you can look for. So my guest today, we're going to unpack that for you, Dr. Dennis and Dr. Jen Clark. Welcome back. So um, Dr. Dennis, would you mind sharing with us, you know, I, I think a lot of times people think this is very complicated. And I know you've been on a journey for several years of learning more about this. Can you kind of share some of that with us? Uh, yeah, the first thing that really got my attention was the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. And righteousness really is love and action. Wow, that's so, so good. I says, if the kingdom is the fruit of the spirit, we better know more about actuating <laughs> it, not just looking at it on a bulletin board saying, you know, here's a cornucopia of fruit. Yeah, that's, that, <laughs> when you say that, honestly, that's the first thing I think. <laughs> right. But it's not out there, it's in here. Right. And so uh, when I was born again and filled with the spirit, discerning the human spirit was a, 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 a just normal. And God told me, don't let anything come between what you and I have together. Wow. But Jennifer, I didn't know how to teach something subjective. Right. You know, there are a lot of gifted people right. that can do it, but not necessarily are they good at telling someone else. Yeah, most people, they're <laughs> like, this is what I, that, yeah. you just, just do it. it. Just yeah. do it, yeah. Right. Well, here Jennifer says, you teach me this. Yes. So I had her close her eyes, put her hand down here because I wanted her to pay attention to the seat of the emotions and her conscience, the voice of your spirit, 
and pay attention to what's going on there. And by discerning the spirit, I only had to really do this for a short period of time where I said, close your eyes. That person you needed to forgive, you feel that? That yuck? Let Jesus go to it and through it. Now it's her mm. and Jesus. It's the new creation. Right. And it changed the peace. And as soon as it changed the peace, and I felt, I said, there. He himself is your peace. That's Jesus. That's God's. Then, of course, we had to teach how to stay there, which is a whole <laughs> other ballgame. But, but I, once she had a point of reference, she didn't need me anymore. But see, I had always wondered about the fruit of the Spirit. Right. And I even went to a women's conference once on joy, but nobody had any, and they didn't, <laughs> couldn't tell you how to get it. They right, just and you read you the list, the you're like, said. I will have joy. Right. I right. will have mm -hmm. patience. I will have self-control. I will have gentleness. And you're like, this is really hard. <laughs> but the fruit of the Spirit, those are God's emotions. That's yeah. what our emotions were created for. That's what Adam and Eve felt That's in the garden. So That's all they felt in their emotions until sin came in, and then all of a sudden you start reading about carnal negative emotions. Right, right. So we're not to live by our carnal emotions, wow. but we are to live by the fruit of the Spirit. But now, now Dennis said, that peace you're feeling, yeah. that's the fruit of the Spirit of peace. And we know that um, the, the nine fruit of the Spirit, they're actually, love is, they're all love. Those expressions of the Father's heart. But joy is peace rejoicing. Wow. Peace is love resting and ruling. And so they're all different expressions of love. And That's then really cool. I learned that we could tap into the fruit of the Spirit and we can live that way. The most probably the most common fruit during every in everyday life is peace. <laughs> but, Which is probably the most needed. <laughs> right. But we can always get there. How? Because anytime something interrupts you abiding in peace, that's abiding in the vine, uh, any carnal negative emotion, forgiveness applied, either wow. releasing it or receiving it, will always get us back to peace. And that's how we learn to abide. And that's so what good. we were meant to do. Jesus said it very matter-of-factly, abide in right. the vine. He's like, remain in right. me. Right. And, right. and he's not going to tell us to do something that's impossible. Right. Now, that's I have to say, good. I had to practice because Dennis said that's his, that's a way of, was a le way of life for him. Right. But me, things would happen. I'd go back to, to my head. I'd start overthinking and worrying. Right. And so he would remind me to go back to my spirit. I think that's such a key that you have there too, because I think most people don't realize that it's something they actually need to practice. Right. Because they think, you know, okay, well, I'm going to have Dr. Dennis and Dr. Jen pray for me. And then I'm going to leave here and just have peace all the time. <laughs> and I think mm -hmm. what you're saying is such a big key is being so intentional to actually like almost change your, your life and your habits. And exactly. I made up my mind. At first I thought, am I ever going to get this? Because I'd go <laughs> up to my head and start worrying. And then Dennis would remind me to go back to my spirit and but I was determined because he had a learning curve when he first learned this, when the Lord first had him learn this, he right. had to become determined that he was going to live a forgiveness lifestyle and deal with anything that separated him wow. from the presence of God. Anything that separates us from his peace. Jesus didn't go anywhere. Right. He didn't take his peace away from us. Right. It's a gift. He gave it to us. We That's move so away good. from it. So then we have that to That is so, okay, let's okay. dive into that okay. a little bit okay. because that's such an interesting thing that people always feel like God's withholding from them to some measure. So can you unpack mm -hmm. that a little bit because you're saying he's not withholding from you. No. God is not withholding from you. No. So what, what do they do? It's our carnal emotions that separate us from God. Remember, wow. now, if, if we ask God, Adults, who, where did carnal emotions come from? Adults will get this kind of blank look on this, their face. <laughs> well, we taught a Christian school this and asked the children, where did these bad emotions come from? They said, the devil. <laughs> and that's exactly right. And they didn't that's, exist until the fall. Right. Wow. That's the I wrong. hid that woman you gave me. 
Right. Right. Hurt, so fear, we're going to dive anger, into that a little bit more in just a moment okay. because I believe there's a massive invitation for people to live fully free. Yes. So I want you to stay tuned because we're going to have them pray for you and step into everything that God has for you. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Drs. Dennis and Jen Clark's brand new revelatory book, Abiding in the Secret Place. You will learn practical keys to practicing the presence of God in your everyday life. Also included is the Simple Prayer Journal, your step-by-step -step guide to quiet your soul, along with the companion bonus audio CD, The 60-Day Challenge, that will strategically connect you with God's presence. You will also get their new two-part audio CD set, Discovering the Secret place. This entire Secret Place Power Pack is yours for a donation of just $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9910. In part one of Dennis and Jen's book, Abiding in the Secret Place, you get five critical keys along with relevant scriptures and self-help guided practices as you go deeper and deeper in experiencing God's real presence in your life. You will get rid of barriers and distractions and break free from toxic emotions to fully yield yourself to God each day. Experience profound healing after forgiving others from out of your secret place. In part two of Dennis and Jen's book is the complete Brother Lawrence true classic, The Practice of the Presence of God, that was foundational in the Clark's ministry. You will feel like Brother Lawrence is writing just for you about how you can experience supernatural communion with God in all your regular daily activities. In their book, Simple Prayer and the companion bonus Simple Prayer audio CD, you will be gently guided step by by step with a scripture, daily prayer, and healing prayer, and a place for your personal journal notes for each day of this 60-day challenge. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Drs. Dennis and Jen Clark's brand new revelatory book, Abiding in the Secret Place. You will learn practical keys to practicing the presence of God in your everyday life. Also included is the Simple Prayer Journal, your step-by-step -step guide to quiet your soul, along with the companion bonus audio CD, The 60 day challenge that will strategically connect you with God's presence. You will also get their new two-part audio CD set, Discovering the Secret Place. This entire Secret Place Power Pack is yours for a donation of just $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9910 or send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9910. Welcome back to Something More. I'm your host, Jesse Green. And I believe that the Lord is about to unpack a revelation that's going to change your life. So Dr. Dennis, Dr. Jen Clark, would you mind sharing, you know, there's a lot of misbeliefs right. that people have when it comes to their relationship with God, when it comes to what they have access to, even matters of the heart and how to pray. Mm -hmm. Would you mind sharing a little bit of this revelation yeah. you have? Uh, the, the thing that we saw when we traveled church to church was sometimes we would be on a platform and we went, the, the matters of the heart are the heart of the matter, Christian, <laughs> if you want to. But so we would stand on a platform and some of the church, a thousand people, and we would say, Jesus, the Messiah in you, the hope of glory. Quick, point to Jesus. 98% point. And I says, that distance is a deception. Wow. Yes, he's in heaven. Wow. I'm not going to dispute that. Right. But you missed the point. What did I just say? Right. And if that huge of an audience can have that perception of where's Jesus, quick. So there good. is a lack of the God inside mindedness so that good. is so necessary for us to walk the walk. After all, we were called to walk in the spirit. Right. So to close that distance gap, we found out that the primary issue was like real estate, location, location, location. <laughs> it was like, we would say, okay, Christ in you, where's Jesus? We would say, where's your will? And they'd point to here, wow. where the will is the door of the heart. Wow. And it's down here. And we even had to do exercises to show people that their will was here. 
<laughs> now, what's the scripture say? Kidneys uh, sometimes. Right. And, but, but, but that's not the point. The point is, in practical application, the right. will for them was in their thoughts. Right. So they're trying so hard to change their thoughts, but here their I, I, emotions and their their spirit and their right. will and their will is here, and they're not even addressing that at all. So we would cover a location real quick on a platform, and we saw immediate results, and you can get immediate results with people watching. Wow! And that's let's do that. Of, <laughs> first of all, down here, if you're sitting down. Relax and yield your will. Open the door of your heart like you're going to fall right through this chair. So if you're watching right now, I would say find somewhere to sit. Maybe or stand against the wall. Or stand and against allow the wall. Yourself. Maybe pull over your car <laughs> if you're driving. Don't, don't, clo don't close your eyes. Don't close your eyes if you're driving. <laughs> and yield. Yield to where nothing's holding you up. And... The way to prove that that's your will, to test it, is kind of fall backwards. It's unnatural to fall backwards. So if you're standing or sitting, you yield here to fall backwards, which is not natural. So you have to surrender. Right. And to the degree, ooh, do this one. Pay attention to what it feels like down there. And very slowly, as I yield, Peace increases proportional to yielding. Wow. You want more peace in your life? Learn to surrender to Jesus. Now, what that does That is so good. <laughs> there's, there's scriptures that we've quoted for years, but we're not practicing them. Let right. the peace of God rule. Right. So when you surrender, He's ruling. Whoa, that now, is so good. <laughs> anything you say, He's got authority. There's like, I feel like there's like all of these levels of understanding because it's like as you're yielding, you're surrendering physically, emotionally, your will, your mind. And then from that, I think people are trying to muster up this authority in Christ. But you're saying, no, it's no, in it's the this. surrender yes. and there the peace. Go. You have authority. Right. It's like we have a, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> we have a little acronym in our training sessions where we're teaching people this. Uh, try. T-R-Y. Temporarily resist yielding. Wow. You're in self-effort. You're in self-effort. Do you think that's why, this is just a separate question that I have, but you know, when the Holy Spirit is often moving in power, people like fall out. Exactly. Under, is that just because they're finally yielding? They exactly. Finally, in many yes. cases, they finally yield it. Now, we're not. Wow. When we do an, an altar ministry, and we'll see that often, but what we tell them is don't yield to the person. Right. Yield to the Jesus in you. And even that, so when you good. if you fall out, it's pointing to an even higher purpose. God says, You've experienced yielding. I'd like to see you in the day-to-day -day hustle and bustle of going to work right. yielded. Right. You can do it and sitting still at your desk. Sitting at your yielded. desk yielded. Oh, that's so Bro good. Uh, Brother Lawrence did it while he washed dishes. Right. Which that probably is where we need lots of peace. <laughs> right. <laughs> he was the dishwasher. I love that. Well, will you very quickly just pray? for people, honestly, just to have the, uh, the hunger to, to practice yielding. All right. Father, we just pray right now that the, the, the grace of yielding is being released right now to yeah. whosoever. The grace of yielding, and that grace is not just unmerited favor. That grace of yielding and surrendering is the empowerment of God. It's God's ability to be and to do all that he called you to be and all that he called you to do. That grace for yielding is going to be a key secret for you walking the abundant life that has seemed so mysterious. It's available. It's at hand. It's near. It's closer than you think. It's in you. We even call these the God tools that are available in you. And so that it's not that you need someone else. You just need to learn to yield more, more completely and more fully. If you're sitting in a chair, oh, that I would just fall through this chair and go deeper. And sometimes what pops up, instead of just peace, a joy bubble will pop up. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's 
offer that back to God and worship now and just release that joy and that peace back to God. And, and you're actually giving him the only thing that you really can give him that is the life of God being returned out mm. of a gracious, grateful heart. It's so well, good. There's people all over that, that received it and yeah. they're going to practice it. Practice makes permanent. <laughs> oh, I love that. Practice makes permanent. I am praying and believing that you will not just hear this, but you will practice this until it is permanent. Thank you so much for watching Something More, and we'll see you next time.